Hello and welcome to Tech Dive. Today we're going to be reviewing the Oculus Rift with Touch. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. I was in another world. Coming a long way from the DK1 kit, it's been a pleasure to review the Oculus Rift with Touch. As the middle range price option for VR, it's uh, really got a lot of bang for the buck. There's a certain quality that a headset really needs. You don't get a VR experience from a cell phone. You just don't. You can kind of get an idea of what VR will give you, but you don't get that experience from a cell phone. This though definitely gives you the VR experience you're looking for in VR. So it's only $400 and it does it has it has that level of quality that is needed in a VR headset to really give you the immersive experience you're looking for. The box I got from Best Buy had a headset, two sensors and two Oculus touch controllers, a setup guide and a microfiber cloth. And man, do you, are you going to use that microfiber cloth uh, and maybe others if you have them. The setup of the Oculus was pretty simple uh, for the Oculus side of things. I ran into some trouble with the tech side of things when you're dealing with moving computers and stuff. There's a whole fun Tall Tech Tales video about that experience. Uh, but as far as the Oculus goes, I had a very simple time actually setting up the Oculus itself and it has a wizard that just guides you through the whole process. So at first I was a little shocked that they used Velcro as the kind of main way to adjust the straps on the headset. But then when I put it on I was really surprised about how light it was compared to the Vive. So I believe they used Velcro to really help with the weight problem. It seems like a cheaper solution but it's kind of a nicer Velcro so uh, they really is probably the best solution they could have for the weight problem of a headset. And, and I like it and I've not had a bad experience and honestly if uh, you, the user base has the same size head, you're not going to be adjusting it a whole lot. Uh, really just kind of micro adjustments here and there, or if it kind of loosens up over time. But I don't ever really have to adjust it once I'm in my VR experience. Putting on the headset puts you right into the VR world. The field of view is kind of like a box. If you put a box kind of next to your eyes, that's what it feels like. You don't really see your peripheral vision. That's normal for VR. Everyone's kind of cutoff points a little different. In the Oculus, it's, it's a box shape and it still feels immersive. There's no uh, there's no cutting out to it. So once you once you get the headset on, that little black box around your eyes kind of goes away. You stop seeing it. The same way when you're staring at a monitor, you kind of stop seeing everything else. You just see the game you're in. The same thing's true for VR, but uh, and, and with the Oculus, the field of view is definitely enough that you're never in the middle of the game going, gosh, I wish I could get out of this tunnel. Like, I don't feel that way at all. When I'm in the middle of a game, I feel like I'm in the game and I don't notice that I don't have peripheral vision. The little speakers on it actually pack quite a punch. I end up having to turn it down and the quality is very high. It's 360 degrees and in VR there's this moment whenever you first wear a VR headset, if you don't have a VR headset or never had a chance to really try a high-end VR headset, when you hear something behind you and you turn and look to see it and it's there and there's this moment where you really feel immersed in the world. and. The Oculus Rift delivers on that moment. It really delivers on giving you the moment of like you hear something and you turn and look and there it is because the it maps the audio mapping is really good uh, and and the headset it, it delivers just that immersion you're looking for. It has it. So the controllers are something that I was most pleased with. There the touch sensing is amazing. The way it tracks your fingers is pretty intuitive and pretty good and the way it feels is just very ergonomic it when you hold it it just feels like you're holding a fist and when you let go it the, you don't feel like you're gonna drop the controller it's got a lot it's a very light and and the buttons are all easy to press even for different size hands so the oculus controllers with touch the touch controllers are a real win like these controllers are really one of the best things about the oculus I think, as, compo as opposed to other VR headsets, particularly the Vive. I thought I loved the Vive controllers until I had these in my hands. Now the Vive controllers feel clunky. I'm not saying that's a reason to go against the Vive, but the Vive is looking at making the knuckles that Steam invented. Uh, so anyway, that's a, for the head-to-head -head we're going to have, that's a conversation for there. But I'm going to say that just right now, these controllers are better than the Vive controllers. Really enjoy them, really easy to hold. I've had a pretty good experience getting Steam VR games to work with the Oculus. You do have to run the Oculus app at the same time as Steam VR and allow the Oculus app to use unknown sources, which means allow it the app to boot up games uh, 
in VR games from Steam. When Steam says, hey, I want to use the VR headset, it has to say, yeah, I don't care who you are, you can use it. Okay, a wild cat appeared. Running Steam VR and the Oculus is cumbersome, but it's not something that would keep me from doing it, because actually, I like having the ability to run Oculus games and Steam VR games at the same time. Robo Recall is probably the best VR experience I've had so far, and it's an Oculus exclusive, and I don't regret uh, being able to play Robo Recall at all. So uh, it's a little cumbersome running Steam VR and the Oculus, but not anywhere, not something that would keep you from buying it, because really you're having access to two stores instead of one. It is a comparable experience to the Vive. It really is a comparable experience. There's a lot of details, a lot of subtle differences, a lot of things that are just small differences uh, but if you're looking if you just want VR and you want to make sure you have quality VR at a reasonable price the oculus is your answer there are reasons you may want the vibe of the oculus but if the if price is your main concern you're like I want quality VR at a reasonable price the oculus is the answer and like I said the controllers I think are even better than the vibe so all this to say, the Oculus is roughly $400 right now at the filming of this video. Sometimes it goes on sale for a little cheaper. After taxes, sometimes it might get a little more expensive. But you're looking at roughly $400 for VR headset. When you're already adding on the cost of a VR computer that can run VR, uh, if you, you may already have one, you might have to upgrade your computer to get to that point. But really, knocking a dollar off the price is a, is a big help. So the fact that it's cheap, I, I highly recommend it because it's cheap, but it still works and it's... Uh, quality experience. Really enjoyed this product and I've played a Vive multiple times and uh, and Steven and other people, I've had many people who have played Vives primarily play the Oculus and they have come back and told me that this is a comparable experience. It's not stepping down, it's not better, but it's different and it's great. Does that make sense? Quality VR, reasonable price. I'm going to let you go now. Thanks for watching Tech Dive. Uh, subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this. We have videography, gaming, and computer enthusiast videos because that's what we are and that's what we like and that's what we're bringing to you. And subscribe if you're looking for more. Like if this video helps you out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Games is nice because Robo Recall, shh, patches. Shh. Shh. No. So running Steam VR and the Oculus is a little cumbersome, but hi kitty. <laughs>